Horror is a genre I have always found not always horror in, but beauty and innovation. There are so many ways in which we can shape and mold this genre into something different from what we already have, and is often regarded as one of the most creative genres. But this genre also falls victim to its overuse of tropes and cliches that appear over and over again, such as jump scares and recycled slasher plots, which also makes it a difficult genre to find originality in. It has evolved throughout the course of history from stories around campfires to the most popular kind of storytelling that we consume today, movies. Today I'm going to be taking you on a little journey through the world of horror, more specifically modern horror. If you ask me, horror has evolved into a strong genre, and we have great directors working in the genre today such as Ty West, James Wan, Mike Flanagan, Jennifer Kent, Jordan Peele, Mary Heron, and many more. But the director I want to look at today is Ari Aster and his film Hereditary, released in 2018. Hereditary is not a film for everyone, it's a slow burn that takes its time in telling a tragic story, and it's littered with all kinds of symbolism, creepy sound design, and sometimes confusing plot that may require you to go back and watch it a second time in order to fully understand the story Aster is trying to tell. Hereditary follows the trend of elevated horror, which has sparked a lot of debate in the horror community on whether it is a real subgenre or not. Elevated horror is to describe horror movies with the quote-unquote heightened storytelling, or focused more on, as I mentioned earlier, a slow burn. Let this scene from the new Scream movie from 2022 explain that for you. What's your favorite scary movie? Uh, The Babadook. It's an amazing meditation on motherhood and grief. <laughs> Isn't that a little fancy pants? Well, it's elevated horror. Uh-huh. Uh, or what does that mean, elevated horror? You know, it's like scary, but with complex emotional and thematic underpinnings. It's not just some schlocky cheeseball nonsense with wall-to-wall -wall jump scares. Hmm, that sounds kind of boring to me. There's not much jump scares or violence. More so focusing on psychological dread, and Hereditary is a film that does this exactly. The studio A24 is the most notable to bring content like this to the big screen. But others may argue that elevated horror is just more of a thriller version of horror. You could argue that George A. Romero's Night of the Living Dead is elevated horror, because of its racial and political themes hinted at in the film. However, I'm not here to argue whether hereditary should be called elevated horror, or if this is a subgenre that even exists or not. As strong as opinions I may have on it. Rather, hereditary's impact on the horror genre and why it is an important film in modern horror. But most importantly, why does it work so well, in my opinion? For this video, I'm going to go into two scenes from the movie Hereditary and go into depth with its film form, which are things like sound, cinematography, editing, and other parts that create the shape of the movie. And I think the most important parts that make Hereditary work so well is its cinematography, its acting, its narrative, and its sound. Obviously, the acting is the most notable, but for today, I want to focus on some of the other parts, which are narrative and sound. The opening scenes of Hereditary gives us a lot of information that becomes relevant later in the film. It can be easy for somebody watching the first time, even for me, to miss some of the details and will need to watch it a second time. The symbolism and set pieces can play a huge part in the telling of a story. Older films like Alfred Hitchcock's Psycho do this in multiple scenes using mirrors, background props, and lighting as a way to foreshadow the events that come in the film, and some viewers may not even notice small details like this. And it shows that Aster took inspiration from films like these, given how much emphasis the camera puts on certain objects throughout. Let's take a look at some of the relevant information we get from the first five minutes of this movie alone. As the camera zooms in, we have the dollhouses, the music, even the movement of the camera telling us the tone of the story. It zooms into Peter's room in a very smooth transition. Then later, let's fast forward. We get a shallow focus of Annie giving an eulogy and her describing the new faces, hinting at the cult the grandmother was a part of revealed later in the movie. Her speech overlaps in a sound bridge to this scene here. 
The symbol on the grandmother's necklace and the creepy man smiling, which we see again towards the end of the movie. Nice. The father asking Charlie this. There are nuts in that one. No. Yeah, I'm not even going to get into what happens later in the movie as far as this information about Charlie, but you get my point here. Movies are supposed to give us a lot of information we need to know within a short amount of time, and Hereditary does that. Every detail shown in the movie is important, even if it gets a little confusing at times. The ending, which in my opinion, overexposed information, gives us a lot of answers to the questions we may have. And this trend of horror storytelling has occurred all throughout the 2010s, and in my opinion, it revived the horror genre after a phase of terrible remakes and knockoffs, which we saw in the late 2000s. People are now taking the horror genre more seriously, and looking at it from a different perspective, because of films like Hereditary, and because of films like The Babadook, and I think that's a great thing. I believe audience expectation has changed over time, and audiences are now looking for filmmakers who are wanting to make something different, and wanting to take a different spin on this genre. Sound is one of the most important factors for creating a memorable cinematic experience. I mean, when you look at the Halloween movies with Michael Myers, you think of the Halloween theme by John Carpenter. When you think of Freddy Krueger, you think of the little girl singing, or that amazing soundtrack from 1977's Suspiria by Goblin. In a similar case with Hereditary, a lot of people know the soundtrack from the end of the movie that blew up on TikTok. But the rest of the film's music and sound design is also fantastic and is masterful in helping to build a suspense in a scene. Like this one. Take a watch. What are you doing? Sound is important in the horror genre because it tells us things. As you just saw in the scene, there's no jump scares to be had. The scare is heavily reliant on other film form contributions like lighting and acting. Jump scares are commonly used in horror films, but a lot of times incorrectly. In Hereditary, there are little to no jump scares. Instead, the sound is a tool to slowly build the suspense in a scene. Aster understands that in order for a horror story to work, you have to have likable characters that you want to survive, hence the acting and screenplay. And the music constantly keeps us in dread over their fate. We know that something disturbing is happening in the background or that we don't see throughout the film because the music tells us that. It's keeping us guessing for its entire runtime. And it's the sound that keeps the movie long in your mind after you leave the theater. Hereditary is one of my all-time favorite horror movies, and every time I watch it, I feel like I notice something new, and I didn't see the previous time I watched it. I've only gone through a couple parts of film form, but I could make an hour-long video going over all the parts of film form for this movie. One thing's to be known. Hereditary's legacy will live on to influence and teach filmmakers for generations long after. Thanks a lot for watching this video guys. If you enjoyed watching this video essay and you're interested in seeing more, be sure to leave a comment below on what I should do next. I post a lot of different things on my YouTube channel, so I'm sure that there is something on there for you. That's all I have for now, and see ya.